We're at the Agora now, which was kind of like the heart of ancient Athens. This was the assembly area. This is where you would come down and do most of your shopping, or if you were a politician, you would gather in here and discuss things, which is always an important role for politicians even to this day. And it is in the shadow of the Acropolis where we were this morning. I'm looking forward to getting in here and seeing the Temple of Hephaestus, uh, who was quite a unique character to say the least. We first walked into the site and what we came across on our left was this really cool building. This was the Stoa of Atalos, which has actually been converted into the Museum of the Athenian Agora. Unfortunately, when we got there, we weren't able to go, but luckily there's a lot to see on this site and I was excited to get out there and check it out for ourselves. Behind me, this is the middle stoa, and this was the largest building in the ancient Agora, and it was almost five football fields long, but only about 60 feet deep, and there seems to have been three layers of columns that went across, and since this is the Agora, this is probably where you had all your stalls of people selling things, and so you'd have like these differentiated stalls and one would be selling clothes and one would be selling jewelry and you just come here to go on a nice little shopping excursion. And as we left the middle stoa, I saw these really cool statues over in the distance. I definitely wanted to check those out. Yeah, the statues were really nice and they were all that was really left of the Odeon of Agrippa. And the Odeon of Agrippa was essentially like a, an opera house of sorts, and it was this really big building, but really it's just those little statues that are left. But unfortunately it was destroyed in 267 BCE, so we weren't able to see what it looked like back then. So one of the things that I think is really a highlight is the quality of the marble they used for all their columns is just magnificent. And there was no better example of the quality of marble than that amazing monument up on the hill. So of course we needed to go find the stairs to get up there. And it was a pretty short, moderate hike. But I tell you, those views up there were the highlight of the site by far. And I think the highlight of Athens in general. Temple of Hephaestus is amazing. Um, it's actually the most preserved Greek temple in all of Greece, if not the entire world. Um, it was dedicated to Hephaestus, which is a Greek demigod. And Hephaestus is a very interesting character in Greek mythology. As the story goes, Hephaestus was a demigod. It was the son of Zeus and Hera. And he was born disfigured. So Hera's like, ew, no, and threw him down the mountain of Olympus. Mother of the year. <laughs> So, as you can imagine, Hephaestus was pretty mad about this. So he actually, when he grew older and had a lot more power and had a lot more powerful friends, he kidnapped Hera. And Aphrodite, his first wife, was kind of the bargaining chip so that Zeus could get Hera back. Um, and they never had any kids. Um, in fact, 
the marriage kind of ended when she cheated on Hephaestus with Ares and had a bunch of his kids. Hephaestus was really mad at Aphrodite, obviously. So he actually went and found Athena and tried to rape her. She was able to pull him off at the last second and uh, I guess he's like two pump chump. So she uh, took some of his seed off of her leg and just flicked it off onto earth and it actually landed inside of the goddess of earth and they bore a child. Besides being a horrible philanderer and a attempted rapist, Hephaestus was also the god of crafts and metalwork, which was really important. But I do see the irony in the fact that this is the city of Athena, and we have these temples of Athena up on the hill, and her attempted rapist gets his own beautiful temple down here below. It's a very interesting story. Greek mythology is uh, full of a bunch of different interesting stories, and it's really cool that they have a temple to the sky, I guess. And speaking of interesting stories, one of the coolest parts of the temple were the stone reliefs and friezes on the sides and on the pediment. Yeah, I know one of the sides was the 12 labors of Hercules, which is a common theme for a lot of those type of things. But the other side was the labors of Theseus, and he was the mythical founder of Athens. So I thought that was really nice. And we spent some time marveling at the building, and then we headed down back across the site from the upper level, and along the way, Dad found this cool bell that he just had to ring. And we tried, but we couldn't find anything about the importance of this cool bell, but it seemed like it should have some sort of importance because it's there. Um, if you guys know anything about it, please drop it down in the comments. We'd love to know. I'd have to assume it had something to do with the church that was up there. There was this really cool Byzantine church. This is the Church of the Holy Apostles, and it is classical Byzantine style. And there's some of our favorite things here. Citrus. I'll let you know how they taste in just a minute. So, Dad decided to pick up one of the oranges next to the Church of the Apostles, uh, which is this cool Byzantine church over by the Agora. And how were they? I'll show you again. <laughs> Seems like they're oh, a bit sour. Uh, they are sour. Probably not ripe enough. Mm -hmm. And one of the really cool things that I love about historical cities is that the archaeology is like literally here, there, and everywhere, and sometimes you're even sitting on it. So they made a bench out of an artifact, and it's in the shade of an olive tree, and it's really a nice place to sit. And that number KT, I believe that's A4824, is somewhere in the documentation of where it was found and when it was found. And I'm assuming it wasn't right here, but probably close by. And we hope you're enjoying our Greece trip and our Greece vlogs because we enjoyed very much going to Greece and we have more Greece coming up and some Cyprus. But for next week, I'm not exactly sure what we're gonna put out. We are right this moment in Germany for Oktoberfest, and it seems like that might be a timely thing to try to get out quickly. So the one thing I can guarantee you is that something out of Europe, the whole entire continent, will be on here next Thursday. Yeah, you guys definitely need to like and follow along with us because you never know where we are. But no matter where we are, no matter where you are, Remember to find yourself on the journey. journey.